Hello everyone. Today's case takes us to the land of the morning calm, South Korea. And this time, the severity of the case goes beyond an ordinary incident. It took 18 years of relentless effort from both the media and the police. And it shook and awakened a portion of the South Korean population at the time. The incident occurred in Gyeonggi province in the northwest of South Korea. The main character in our story is Hyun Ah, born in 1989 in the city of Pocheon. Hyun Ah's father was a military officer, and her entire family lived in a collective housing area within her father's workplace. Most of the residents there knew each other. Hyun Ah grew up in such a harmonious and peaceful environment and attended a nearby school. Though she was quiet, she quickly adapted to school life. Because the school wasn't far from home, Hyun Ah usually walked home after school sometimes alone, and sometimes with friends. In 2003, Hyun Ah was 15 years old, and her studies were becoming increasingly demanding. But this didn't affect her life much. However, that year, a horrifying event occurred that shattered the peace. October 5, 2003, was a Wednesday, and as usual, Hyun Ah woke up on time and walked to school. The afternoon passed quickly, and when the school bell rang, it was already 4 p.m. At that time, she and four other female students decided to go to a friend's house to hang out. They chatted and ate, and before they knew it, it was 6 p.m. Having been raised in a disciplined military environment, Hyun Ah's parents didn't allow her to stay out late. Realizing it was time, Hyun Ah told her friends she needed to head home. As the sun was setting, the other girls also decided to go home. Hyun Ah, along with the four other students, left their friend's house and headed home. Near the school, they parted ways as they lived in different directions. After bidding farewell to her friends, Hyun Ah walked home alone. On the way, she called her mother, telling her she was near the school and would hang up to focus on walking quickly. After the call ended, no one knew what happened next. Hyun Ah's mother, still at home, believed her daughter would arrive soon. But as time passed, her maternal instincts told her something was wrong. She called Hyun Ah back to ask why she hadn't returned yet but there was no answer. Growing increasingly anxious, Hyun Ah's mother and the family went out to search for her. The tragedy begins. Despite searching everywhere, the family couldn't find her, and Hyun Ah's friends reported the same. At 9 p.m., the family, all deeply worried, decided to report her disappearance to the police, hoping for assistance. As soon as they received the report, the police quickly began gathering preliminary information. The missing person was named Hyun Ah, 15 years old. The police initially suspected that at this age, teenagers often have rebellious tendencies, which sometimes leads to them running away from home. So when they started investigating this case, the possibility of Hyun Ah running away was a key focus. They searched at train stations, airports, and several other locations, but there was no trace of her. Investigators learned that before she went missing, Hyun Ah had called her mother saying she would be home soon and would take a shortcut from the school to her house. In reality, that shortcut was very narrow and dark, known only to those living in the area. With no surveillance cameras, the police had to gather information from nearby residents. One local reported seeing a white car driving down that road on the day Hyun Ah disappeared. However, there was something unusual. The back window was obscured by a jacket, as if to prevent people from seeing inside the car. The witness added that because it seemed so strange, he tried to remember the car's details, but it was too dark to see the license plate clearly. He only remembered that it was a white car. Following this lead, the police discovered a similar car belonging to a colleague. This person's shift ended around the same time Hyun Ah went missing, but he had an alibi proving he wasn't at the scene, so the police no longer considered him a suspect. Hyun Ah had her phone with her when she disappeared. According to the call history, she called her mother at 6.18 p.m., but just two minutes later, her phone completely lost signal. Notably, if a phone is turned off normally, the signal would still be picked up by the cell towers. The signal only completely disappears if the battery is removed from the device. From this timeline, it is evident that something occurred right after Hyun Ah called her mother. The perpetrator did not hastily dispose of the phone, but intentionally removed the battery, indicating that they had knowledge of telecommunications. The police believed this to be an organized kidnapping, yet there were no demands for ransom, as would typically be expected. As days passed without any sign of Hyun Ah, her family printed and posted search flyers throughout the streets of Pocheon. 
The media also worked hard to publicize her personal information, hoping that anyone who noticed something could contact the police. Time went by, but the kidnappers still did not contact Hyuna's family for ransom, making the investigation increasingly difficult. The first clue. On November 14th, the ninth day after Hyuna went missing, while workers were carrying out construction on a road in Pochon, one of them happened to find a phone in a roadside trash bin. However, instead of reporting it, he kept it for himself, not realizing that the phone belonged to the missing girl, Hyun Ah. On November 28th, 23 days after Hyun Ah disappeared, two weeks after the worker had found the phone, he was watching TV and saw news about the missing girl. Realizing that the case might be connected to the phone, he contacted the number displayed on the screen. Shortly thereafter, the police searched the area where the phone was found. An officer investigating a storm drain made a horrifying discovery. The body of a female, curled up unnaturally, unclothed, and with the upper part of the body beginning to decompose. The officer immediately called for backup, and investigators quickly arrived at the scene. Upon examination, the doctor found that the lower part of the victim's body, due to its proximity to the storm drain, where the cold winter wind circulated quickly, had not yet decomposed, while the upper part, being more enclosed, had severely decomposed. The cause of death remained a mystery, and the victim's identity couldn't be immediately determined. However, the forensic team did notice that the victim's fingernails and toenails were painted red. This led everyone to assume that the victim was likely an adult woman, since in South Korea, such details might suggest maturity. Since fingerprints are stored in a national database, the team attempted to identify the victim by soaking her frozen hands in warm water. However, when the prints were entered into the database, no match was found, which was puzzling because South Korea maintains a comprehensive fingerprint database. This left only two possibilities. The victim was either a foreigner or under 18. The police immediately thought of Hyun Ah, who had gone missing three months earlier. They asked her parents if she had any distinguishing marks, and they confirmed that Hyun Ah Ha had undergone an appendectomy, which left a scar. After verifying this, the police identified the body as that of Hyun Ah. The crime scene was about six kilometers from Hyun Ah's home, and the storm drain had been covered by a TV box. When she was found, Hyun Ah's body was curled up inside the box. The police immediately began investigating the origin of the TV box. The box had been shipped from a retail electronics store in Southern Potion, and those who had access to it included delivery workers and customers. Moreover, there was a shoe print on the box. Using this clue, the police traced all individuals who owned shoes with similar prints, revealing a delivery worker from the store. He claimed that after delivering the TV to a customer, he was asked to discard the box, so he threw it by the roadside where it might have fallen into the storm drain, which could explain the shoe print on it. After further investigation, the police determined that the TV box was unrelated to the crime, and the delivery worker had an alibi proving he was not at the scene on the day of the incident, so he was removed from the list of suspects. Near the body, the police also found a farm tool, but after investigation, it was determined to belong to a local farmer who had passed away a few months prior and was unrelated to the case. Additionally, they discovered a condom and tissue about seven meters from the body. The police initially thought these might be evidence left by the perpetrator, but after testing, it was revealed that the area was frequently visited by couples, and the items had no connection to Hyun Ah. With no useful leads, the investigation team shifted their focus to examining the victim's injuries. They discovered bleeding under Hyun Ah's skull and neck, suggesting these areas had been subjected to severe trauma. There were no signs of strangulation or sexual assault on her body. The unusual detail was that Hyun Ah's fingernails and toenails were all painted red, which was odd because high school students in South Korea are generally not allowed to do this, and she had never done so before. The police also discovered that the nail polish on Hyun Ah's nails had been applied horizontally. As we know, nail polish is typically applied vertically from the base to the tip. However, Hyun Ah's nails were painted horizontally, and although the application was messy, there were no scratches on the nails. This suggests that the victim did not resist during the painting, indicating that she was already deceased when her nails were painted. The perpetrator had also cut off part of her nails. The police immediately analyzed the composition of the nail polish bottles and compared them with others on the market. The results showed that none of the samples matched, which meant the suspect might have used nail polish of unknown origin from informal vendors. 
An employee at a nearby cosmetics store mentioned that a few days before Hyun Ah went missing, a man came into the store to buy nail polish. The store owner had shown him two bottles of red nail polish to choose from. At the time, the employee didn't think anything was unusual about the man, assuming he was buying the polish as a gift for his wife. However, after hearing about the case, the employee suspected that the man might be connected to the crime. Unfortunately, three months had passed and the store did not have any surveillance cameras. So the identity of the man remained a mystery, a new incident. On September 11, 2004, 10 months after Hyun Ah's case, around 11.10 p.m., an incident occurred just seven kilometers from where Hyun Ah's body was found. A man attempted to attack a woman but failed. He assaulted the victim and dragged her about 20 meters. Fortunately, the victim's family was still on the phone with her. Hearing the screams, they immediately called the police, allowing the woman to escape from the attacker. According to the victim's description, the suspect was around 20 years old, 170 centimeters tall, with short hair and wearing slippers. By the time the police arrived at the scene, the suspect had fled. The question remained, could this person be connected to Hyun Ah's case? A year later, on October 16, 2014, exactly one year after Hyun Ah's case, there had been no progress in the investigation. Lieutenant Yoon, who was in charge of Hyun Ah's case, chose to take his own life, overwhelmed by the psychological pressure. He left a suicide note expressing his deep pain, feeling both powerless and regretful that he could not bring Hyun Ah's killer to justice. Following the death of this dedicated lieutenant, the police immediately increased the reward to 10 million won, hoping that the public would help bring closure to Hyun Ah's case. Hope or despair? On March 17, 2019, a South Korean program called Unanswered Questions received a tip from someone who seemed knowledgeable about the case and broadcasted it on various media outlets. The tipster claimed to be from Pacheon and recalled that in 2003, she frequently traveled outside the city for work during the week and returned to Pochon on weekends. On one Friday evening in late October 2003, as she was walking home, she noticed a white car moving parallel to her, which made her feel very uneasy. The driver then rolled down the window and asked if she wanted a ride. Seeing that it was a man, she immediately refused, but his persistent attitude made her reluctantly get into the car. After she got in, the man kept asking her about her age and address, saying he wanted to take her home. However, as the car approached her home, the man showed no intention of stopping, instead mentioning that he was still single and asking if she would go out for coffee with him. At this point, the woman became extremely frightened and, in a moment of panic, thought of jumping out of the car to escape. She said that when she saw the car slowly heading towards a school, she finally got out and walked home, fearing that if the man knew her address, he might seek revenge. However, since she hadn't been harmed, she decided not to report the incident to the police. A week after the girl returned to Pochon, she noticed missing person posters of Hyun Ah plastered everywhere. She immediately suspected that the incident was connected to the man driving the white car, but fear kept her from informing the police. 16 years later, she finally found the courage to come forward and expose him. Relying on her memory from that time, she sketched a rough portrait which was published on March 17, 2019. As she described him, the man was about 1.7 meters tall, had fair skin, brown eyes, long fingers with clear nail polish, and a khaki jacket on the back seat. The car's license plate started with Kyongi 735. A week later, with the help of the police, she completed the portrait and released it to the media. After the portrait was made public, many people commented that the suspect closely resembled the perpetrator in another criminal case. However, the police were cautious, noting that since so much time had passed, over 16 years, the details recalled might be unreliable, as they were remembered through hypnosis therapy. Therefore, the accuracy of the portrait was questioned. When they checked the provided license plate number, the police found nothing suspicious. To this day, the suspect in the case has not been identified. In 2007, South Korea extended the statute of limitations for serious criminal offenses from 15 to 25 years. In 2015, the statute of limitations was abolished entirely, meaning that if the perpetrator is ever found, they can be prosecuted no matter how old they are. Hopefully the police will eventually bring the criminal to justice, whether it's in 10 or 20 years to finally secure justice for Hyun Ah. This strange case ends here. 
What are your thoughts on the police, the victim, and the killer? Do you think the murderer will ever be found, or will they continue to roam free? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to hit the bell and subscribe to receive notifications about our latest videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks, and see you next time.